Welcome back everybody to I Film Things. I'm Philip and today is episode 2 of my lighting mini-series. And today is all about high-key and low-key lighting. Myself and my high-key counterpart will be explaining the difference between the two and how to best utilize both. So let's start things off with my low-key counterpart. So without further ado, let's get on with high-key and low-key lighting. What is low-key lighting? Low-key lighting is a style of lighting used in photography and film. It's lighting that uses a hard light source to enhance the shadows within your shot. It's all about utilizing the shadows, which is the exact opposite of the more popular high-key lighting. Thanks, Loki. The main reason to use low-key lighting is to isolate your subject, convey mystery, or add an air of drama within your scene. Shadows, darkness, and dark colors are its key characteristics. Avoiding any whites or mid-tones in your shot is imperative when setting up low-key lighting. I should change my shirt. <clears throat> eh, that'll do. It's a nice, dark silk robe. If you want your audience to be gripped and on the edge of their seats, low-key lighting is the place to start. What is high-key lighting? High-key lighting is a style of lighting used in film, but is more commonly used in photography. This refers to the main light, which is usually a very powerful light source that fills up the whole shot. So my window covered with the mattress cover is my, is my key light, and my big LED panel is the fill light. In terms of lighting setup, the key light is a lot brighter and stronger than the fill lights. It's free from dark, dull shadows. So a key reason to use this setup is to reduce the lighting ratio and light up your shot well. The ratio of key light to fill light is almost one to one. This will remove any shadows, allowing you to achieve a high key setup. It was originally used due to technical issues. Back in the day, high contrast ratios were not really dealt with very well. So the high key technique was implemented to combat this. A great example of high-key lighting setup is the comedy series The Good Place. They utilize high-key lighting to its best. God, I love that show. What's the difference between the two? Essentially, the difference is high-key is used to eliminate shadows, and low-key is used to enhance and take advantage of the shadows. Okay, so for my low-key setup at the moment, I have my chair right here. I've got my black... Uh, backdrop i've got my big my big led light over there my little led light over there and it's got the blue gel on it uh, and for the lens i've got my canon i've got my canon 50 mil because it's the only one that i have that can go down to the levels that i need it to uh and yeah uh yeah at the moment i've tested out i've tested it out once or twice with this it seems to be okay and hopefully it looks alright uh, for you guys. Okay everyone, so before I start filming uh, this part of the video, because I'm doing two setups, I'm doing the high key one and the low key one, let's take a look at the high key. So at the moment uh, I'm using my window with a, uh, with a mattress cover as my key light, because it's the biggest thing I have in my room. Uh, then this is more of a fill light, I suppose. Then that one is my backlight. I uh, thought I'd put a bit of orange on it this time to see if it comes up at all. Uh, if it does, hooray. If not, still still a nice pop of colour to have in the background. Um, and yeah, this is how I'm doing my high key setup. Uh, obviously, it's not ideal, but it's the way that I am able to show you how it all works. So, I hope you enjoy. What's the best practice when setting up low-key lighting? The correct camera. Let's start with the obvious one. You need a camera capable of capturing high-quality images in low lighting. You'll need to make sure that your camera has a low enough ISO setting to be able to film in this low lighting. Set your ISO level to 100 or as low as it will possibly go. 
This will allow you to capture the image as dark as possible and have as little noise in your shot. The best combo to film this is to have your ISO level as low as possible and your shutter speed as fast as possible. This will help you shoot in low key lighting and get the highest possible quality. Speedy lenses. For the low key setup, you need a lens that is quick. By quick, I mean a lens that has an aperture of 1.4 or 1.8. The standard aperture for DSLR lenses is more around 3.5. This will not cut it because the lens will be too slow to work in low-key lighting, and will produce an image with way too much noise, leaving you with a hot pile of garbage. At the moment, I'm using my 50mm Canon lens because it's the only one that can go down to 1.8. Quality lights. You'll want to use lights of an excellent standard. Most filmmakers prefer to use a softbox to ensure they light the subject correctly, and keep the majority of shot in darkness. <coughs> Sorry, I can't keep that voice going. I'm stopping that now. <laughs> shoot RAW! You'll want to shoot in RAW because it will give you the ability to sculpt the footage more in post-production. And for RAW, that's more for 2K, 4K, 6K. At the moment, I'm shooting at 1080p, so for me, it's not really that much of an issue. Monitor your histograms. This is incredibly important. Monitoring your histograms ensures that your subject is not over or underexposed. Your histograms will look different than normal, but that is normal for low-key lighting. But you have to check the pixel information. But if it's a little off, you can always fix it in post-production. Try negative fills. Using negative fills means using a board or a piece of fabric that's placed behind your subject. And you'll need this to be a dark colour, so black or dark grey. It's important when filming in low-key lighting, as you'll want to be able to control the soft light coming into your shot, and keep the background darker than the subject. If you don't, it will damage the lighting setup and ultimately just ruin it. What's the best practice for setting up high-key lighting? To master this look, you must use significantly powerful light sources and soft shadows. Soft shadows are the key to nailing the high-key setup. One way to soften the light is to use a diffuser, like my mattress cover behind the camera. <laughs> this will help reduce the coarseness of the shadows. The larger the light source you have available, the softer the shadows look, as the light has a much larger surface area. That combined with a diffuser will help you get the high-key look. There are two methods for high-key lighting, the three-light setup and the four-light setup. I'm going to quickly see. Sorry about that, natural light, as I've already said in my natural light video, is very unpredictable. Unfortunately, both of these lighting setups require more lights than I currently have access to. So I wasn't able to do them for this video, so... My bad? The three light setup. So the three light setup is where you have your key light close up to your subject, preferably at a... 35 to 40 degree angle, then place the two supporting lights around two feet back and have them angled similar to the key light. These should be much stronger than your key light so they can overexpose and glow out those areas. And now there should be absolutely no shadows. If there are, you need to modify your key light until it sits correctly and produces soft shadows. The four light setup. This setup allows you to remove even more shadows as you have more light to direct towards the subject. However, it does differ from the three light ever so slightly. The fourth light is positioned in the opposite position to your key light, and then pointed straight at it. Now the key light must be moved further back from the subject, and the fourth light will have to be identically positioned to the other supporting lights. You need to have a play around with this setup so you have just a little bit of shadow. It can be a soft shadow to complement the lighting setup, but enough to stop the shot from becoming overexposed. Always keep the shadows to a minimum, but remember that they do add dimension to your shot. When do you use low-key lighting? It's an essential tool for creating an atmosphere within the scene, perfect for adding mystery and tension within your film. Sorry if you can hear that, uh, I, I have to keep my window open because otherwise I will probably die of heat exhaustion. It's perfect for commercials because you can use it to isolate the product and focus in the audience's attention on your product. When do you use high-key lighting? 
A lot of the time, high key lighting is used in commercials, music videos, comedies, and generally scenes depicting happy, funny moods. Again, The Good Place is a great example of high key lighting, as it's primarily white tones from bright lights and lacks darkness. The brightly lit scenes give off a happy, fun vibe that plays into the story of The Good Place. It's also a great way to convey truth. That's why a lot of interviews are lit with a high key lighting setup. Example of low key lighting. An excellent example of low key lighting is the film The Conjuring. There are a few shots that use this to isolate characters, especially the monster, to create suspense and tension and just general spookiness. An example of high key lighting. I know I'm cheating a bit here and it should be film, but I'm going with the good place. I know, I know, I'm repeating myself, but it's a great series and a great example of high key lighting. Go watch it if you haven't already, and let us know what you thought in the comments below. And that's it for today's video! I hope you're enjoying the lighting mini series so far. If you are, you know what to do. I hope you enjoyed it, I hope it helped you in any way, shape, or form. And as always, stay safe, stay creative, and I will see you in much better lighting in the next video. Bye! Bye.